Hello, my name is Mike Eck. In this presentation, Ligia Bernadet and I would like to provide you with an introduction to the Common Community Physics Package. The CCPP is an enabler and cornerstone of hierarchical system development. It's useful to take some time to explain this. The hierarchy approach can be the most efficient way to effectively connect research to operations and operations to research. To address systematic model biases, models should be improved at the process level. Examining a single physics scheme allows understanding at the process level, but not for the entire complex system, such as a global or coupled model. While examining the complex system does not necessarily provide understanding at the process level, the hierarchy approach allows for model testing small parts, such as physics schemes, of the model, first in isolation, and then progressively connecting the parts with increased coupling between the components and the hierarchy steps. These include single column models, limited area models, and regional models, all the way up to complex fully coupled models. A requirement for moving from one hierarchy step to the next includes appropriate metrics and benchmarks of model performance, many at the physical process level, plus the necessary forcing data sets to drive the model. Forcing data sets may be obtained from observational networks and field programs or model output, as well as idealized conditions for stress testing system components across the hierarchy steps. But this process is not sequential, rather it is concurrent and iterative. That is, more complex hierarchy steps can provide information to be used at simpler hierarchy steps and vice versa. This also includes understanding spatial and temporal dependencies and the need for consistency in solutions in models between higher resolution regional short range, global medium range, and S2S timescales. Readiness levels for operations generally increase moving toward regional, global, and coupled models. In this presentation, we will cover the three elements of the CCPP. The physics, which is a library of physical parameterizations. The framework, the software infrastructure that allows using the CCPP physics with a host model. And the single column model, or SCM, a simple host model that employs the CCPP physics and framework. The first element of the CCPP is the physics. Parameterizations are stored individually in the CCPP physics, which enables users to use them with the chosen granularity, one scheme or many schemes in a suite. This empowers hierarchical system development. Schemes have been implemented by various organizations, sometimes in tandem, as noted in the legend. Here is a list of types of parameterizations and the scheme or schemes that are available in the CCPP for each parameterization type. CCPP uses the application programming interface with five phases. Init initializes the physics, invoked once per run. Time step init, used for time dependent but domain independent calculations. Run executes the bulk of the parameterization during integration. Time step finalize, domain independent calculations, which are executed after physics. The Time step init, run, and time step finalize are invoked once per physics time step. And then finally, finalize cleans up allocation memory and other final operations, and that is invoked once per run. The second element of the CCPP is the framework, which is the infrastructure that connects the CCP physics to a host model, which can be a single column model or a three-dimensional model. The connection is made through tables of metadata that describe the variables provided by the host model and the variables requested by each physics scheme. Given this metadata, the CCPP framework auto-generates the physics caps before the model is built. The caps, along with the rest of the physics and host model codes, are then compiled together to create the model executable. At runtime, the framework is used to pass variables between the host and the physics. The CCPP framework supports hierarchical system development because it is interoperable. The physics can work with a variety of host models ranging from simple to complex. CCPP 
includes scientific documentation. Note the link at the bottom of the page. The metadata described in slide number six is also used to generate scientific documentation. This is an example for the documentation of the GFDL microphysics parameterization. The metadata associates each variable local to a physics scheme to a standard name, a long name, units, type, dimensions, kind, and intent. This makes each physics scheme more understandable by users and developers. We have previously described CCPP physics and the CCPP framework. These CCPP elements are used in a host model through the suite definition file, which is an XML file that describes which schemes should be called at runtime. Multiple suite files can be used at compile time and are available for use at runtime. The suite definition file enables various aspects of hierarchical system development. For example, it enables groupings, which is the ability to call parameterizations in groups with other computations in between, such as the dynamical core or coupling. It also enables subcycling and iteration, allowing individual schemes to be called at higher frequency than others. Finally, it enables ordering or the ability to define the order of execution of schemes. These are the CCPP suites that are currently publicly supported for use with a host model. The top line indicates that two main types of suites are supported, operational and developmental. The second line shows the names of the suites. Only suite GFS version 15 P2 is operational. The third line indicates which host model can be used with the suite. The single column model can be used with all suites. While the UFS medium range weather and short range weather applications can be used with a subset of the suites. The remaining lines list the parameterizations in each suite. The schemes in bold differ from what is used in the GFS version 15.2 suite. Additional details are in the CCPP recent updates and outlook recorded presentation. CCPP must provide high performance for operations, fast execution, and low memory footprint, and flexibility for research. When using CCPP, a physics driver is not employed, avoiding if-else statements. This makes for faster execution. For the UFS, it is 5% faster than when a physics driver was used. A multi-suite build is used, which retains the performance while enabling researchers to use a variety of suites with a single executable. Automatic unit conversions expedite development and transition. The example at the bottom is for converting units from FV3, which is in micrometers, to and from the Thompson microphysics scheme, which is in meters. The CCPP SCM requires an initial state, temperature, moisture, and wind, taken from observations, or an idealized situation, or taken from model output. Forcing is applied to mimic changes in the column state from the surrounding environment replacing the die core. Physics respond to changes in the column state and in turn changes the column state. The end state is a combination of forcing and physics. The pros are that the SCM is simpler to develop, easier to interpret, and computationally inexpensive. The cons are that the use of the SCM is sensitive to forcings that drive the SCM, and that the SCM is a necessary but not sufficient step to fully understand and address systematic model biases, especially fully coupled 3D NWP and Earth system models. There are a number of CCPP single column model cases, many historical and available, that have been studied by the research community. Currently, our cases include a focus on marine convection, continental convection, two cases, stratocumulus, and shallow cumulus. The goal is to have many additional cases that include a variety of different meteorological regimes for different regions, community contributed cases, and cases made available through international collaboration where the CCPP single column model is adopting an internationally agreed upon format for input datasets. Additional details are in the CCPP recent updates and outlook recorded presentation. 
There have been a number of CCPP releases in the past few years, initially for the single column model, then later for the UFS weather model, and now including the UFS medium range weather app. After version 4.1, there is a compatibility with Python 3. Additional details are in the CCPP recent updates and outlook recorded presentation. CCPP user support is provided via the DTC CCPP forum and the UFS forum. There is also scientific and technical documentation, a user's guide, GitHub discussions, and the CCPP and CCPP single column model online tutorials. In summary, the Common Community Physics Package consists of CCPP Physics, a library of physical parameterizations, the CCPP framework, software infrastructure that allows using the CCPP physics in a host model, the CCPP single column model, a simple host model that employs the CCPP physics and framework. The CCPP is designed to lower the bar for community involvement in physics testing and development through increased interoperability, improved documentation, and continuous support to developers and users. Together, the CCPP and the corresponding CCPP single column model provide a software infrastructure that efficiently connects some of the steps in the hierarchical system development approach, better enabling atmospheric physics development for research and operations.